Sharpen the knives, polish the pans, it's MasterChef time. 20 brand new celebrities eager to impress in the MasterChef kitchen. I'm about to master some chef moves. Do they know the difference between a ladle and a microphone? A tap shoe and a tong? We're about to find out. I don't even know how to cook, but I definitely will try feel the rhythm. I want to win. I want to win it and be a proper cook. Who can sizzle and shine, and who might land themselves in hot water? These five celebrities are taking on the challenge to become the next MasterChef champion. But at the end of today, only the best cooks will make it through. I'm not a bad cook. Everyone seems to like my cooking. It's the size of portions that may let me down. I love cooking. I'm old enough to be an experienced cook. <laughs> I love challenges. I wouldn't like to come last. That's what I'm dreading. The competitiveness has kicked in. I just hope I don't embarrass myself. I'm quite driven and ambitious, so if I want something, I'm absolutely going to try my best to get it. I can't tie the bow. Do it to the side so you can see it. Well, that's a good idea, isn't it? Oh, it's very glamorous that way, isn't it? Why didn't I think of it? Welcome to Celebrity MasterChef. You are our first group of celebs. Feed us well, and we'll be happy. Underneath that cloth on your bench, there is an essential piece of equipment to enable you to get through this first challenge. So, if you can just lift your cloth, that'd be great. No idea what that is. That is a sausage filling machine and some sausage skins. I love it. We want you to make a sausage mash and gravy using any of these ingredients at all on these benches. But the sausages have to be made from scratch. I didn't even know you could do that. You think only a sausage factory could make a sausage, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You'll have 50 minutes to cook the dish. All we ask is it's edible. <laughs> wow. Up you come. Get your ingredients. I don't even know what to get, man. To make their sausages, the celebrities can choose from a range of meat, including pork belly, beef chuck, lamb shoulder, bacon, chorizo, black pudding, and suet. Not a plan whatsoever. For the mash, they have potatoes, sweet potato, swede, squash, and parsnips. What do you put in your sausage? What do you put in your mash? How do you make your gravy? It could absolutely go anywhere and be anything. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 minutes. Let's cook. I'm Neil Rosa Ruddock, ex-professional footballer. Played for a lot of teams, Liverpool, West Ham, England. I'm a bit infamous. I used to be a bit of a bad boy and a, and a tough tackler. So beautiful. What do I like the most? Indian, Chinese, roast dinners, pie and mash, puddings, fish. I love everything. Neil, have you made a sausage before? No, I've made meatballs. What's the sausage? What's the rest of the dish? I'm going to mix a couple of meats up, suet, a few herbs, a bit of garlic, mashed potato, butter, a bit of cream, onion gravy. I don't want to be rude, but you have a reputation of a bit of a rebel rouser. I'm a Crazy grizzly bear on the pitch, but off the pitch, I'm a cuddly grizzly bear. <laughs> and when we turn up the pressure? Listen, pressure is telling your missus you're getting home at 10 o'clock and you're still in the pub at half four. That's pressure. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Neil's a sportsman, he's competitive. This is the hardest thing I've ever done. And he's making what sounds like quite a classic sausage mash and gravy. <laughs> he's got a mixture of three different meats. Ah! He's got lamb, beef and pork. This is horrible. He's then putting that with some leeks as well. Nightmare. To give it a bit more flavour. So I'll make a nice one. He's making a classic mashed potato, that means no lumps, and then he's making a gravy. I hope there's a bit of flavour in there. My name is Oti Mabuse. I'm a professional dancer on Strictly Come Dancing. I've been dancing for 25 years. That's what I do. I just dance about in sequin dresses. I normally, on a regular basis, <laughs> cook for my husband. The last time I cooked for him, I managed to give myself food poisoning. So I don't think that's a good sign. Oti right now, she's got a beef sausage with cheese in it. That's fine. But then she's flavoured with honey to make it sweet. Interesting combination. She's serving the whole lot with sweet potato mash. And her gravy's going to be a chunky tomato vegetable gravy. Fantastic. We've got a beef, honey and cheese sausage. Yeah. Haven't had one of those in a while. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be really interesting. I don't know how it tastes. Do you cook anywhere near as well as you dance? Absolutely not. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. No, I do not. I know, I don't know how to... I'm just trying. You said be creative. I'm trying. My name is Joey Essex. I'm most known for uh, being on The Only Way Is Essex back in the day. I'm Joey Essex. That's it. I think it's how you'd cut it. Slices, maybe. I hate getting my hands dirty. I like to keep it extremely clean. I loved cooking at school. I was going to take Chef as a GCSE. I didn't, but here I am. Oh, I'm actually making a sausage. It's hilarious. I'm learning to be a chef. It looks like mince meat. It's like a quick university course. I'm basically at uni. I made it. Joey, look, we know you like a glass of champagne. Yeah. But do you cook? I'm quite good at cooking eggs on toast. Obviously, beans on toast. Anything on toast, I can cook. Sourdough toast. It's getting posher. So tell me how you're approaching this. What's your, what's your sausage going to be? What's a, norm, what's a normal British sausage called? They're a pork sausage. That's it. I'm going to make a pork sausage. There's chive. I'm going to put some dill in my mash. Good. Is that normal? Do you know how to make gravy without the granules? Nah. Right, you've got your work cut out here, haven't you? Joey has got a sausage mixture on the go, and it seems to be just fat. <laughs> And he's going to flavour the whole lot with some dill and some chives. What's that? The problem with Joey's sausage is it might be just fat and the whole thing might melt away. Oh no, what's happened to that? And Joey's never made gravy. Look at that gravy. It's absolutely gorgeous. Oh. You're halfway. 25 minutes left. I'm Sandra Rhodes, and I'm a fabric and dress designer. I did the costume for Freddie Mercury that everyone thinks of him with, with the wonderful pleated sleeves. I'm known for colour. Never made a sausage before, so we'll see what happens. I would say I'm a bit of a messy cook. Isn't First it? time for everything, isn't it? That's why it's a challenge, I suppose. When I was at school, I always got told off for untidiness in the kitchen. All the best amateur cooks I know are messy, Sandra. Oh, oh, All right. I like to know How that. much cooking do you do? When I'm in London, I will cook a dinner party for about 12. You ever made a sausage? I didn't learn to knot it in time, so I'm going to do an artistic Sandra Rose wiggle. What's in there? Lamb, fennel seeds, apricots and suet. What's in your mash, please? It's sweet and potato. Perfect. And I don't peel the potatoes ever. There's going to be skin in the mash. There is. It's artistic. Certainly is. Sandra's sausages are lamb-based sausage with apricot syrup. But she hasn't had time to go to tie them, so she's being inventive and artistic and making a Sandra wiggle. 
Oh, it looks quite pretty. Look at how they've swollen up. My name's Andy Grant. I'm the fastest single leg amputee in the world. Former Marine, now motivational speaker. I'd much prefer to go and run 10K or a half marathon or climb a mountain than I would have the pressure of just trying to rustle something up from scratch. Yeah, this kitchen one's going to be difficult. So do you cook at all, Andy? A little bit. I do a good roast dinner. Right. But I'm one of these people, if I... It's, again, back to the days in the Marines, monkey see, monkey do. You made your sausage? Yeah. What's in there? <laughs> I can't even remember. <laughs> um, so onion, garlic, we went for beef. I just forget the name of it, the Spanish one, the... Uh, chorizo? Chorizo. How confident are you in those sausages? Not very confident, no. <laughs> they look like they're going to fall apart any second. One of them's making a bid for freedom there, Chef. It is. Um... <laughs> <laughs> His sausages are very, very thin, which means they'll cook quite quickly. And they don't look great, to be honest. He's got a good, creamy mash on his bench, which looks all right. But right now, the gravy looks more like a pot of stock, brown water. That's not gravy. Gravy needs to be thickened. Organised chaos, I think. You've got five minutes left. I'd be happy with it, do you know what I mean? My problem is the mesh. You've got two minutes. Ah! Oh, I think it's a bit too large a helping, but... 30 seconds. Sausages cooked, mash cooked, gravy made. Come on! Time's up. Stop. Please stop. Just brush that, just brush that pepper off my shoulder. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We've all managed to make a sausage. I know. OT, come on, bring us your sausage. <laughs> Professional dancer OT has made beef, chilli, honey and cheese sausage with sweet potato mash and a tomato and onion gravy. Your sausage looks great. Thank you. That is not bad. Yeah. I'm getting a little hint of cheese from inside your sausage, but I think with the sausage, we could do with a lot more seasoning. Yeah. Your sweet potato's OK. It could do with a knob of butter, cos it's a little bit watery, but I really like the sweet pepperiness of your so-called gravy, <laughs> which is more like a, a tomato salsa. That's not bad. Thank you. Your mash could be cooked a little bit more. Yeah. You could probably have a little bit more fat running through the sausage because it's a little bit dry, but the flavours are great. I think this is the first time where I've literally been doing something and it's not in my element. And the nerves, man, it's awful! Good gentlemen. Former professional footballer Neil has served beef, lamb, pork, bacon and leek sausage with mashed potato and an onion and pork gravy. Your plate is as shiny as your shoes, Neil. Yes. I think it looks good. Yeah, but I'm happy. I don't think it could be any better than that. Your mashed potato is smooth as it should be and rich with butter and really well seasoned. Your gravy, because there's a sweetness of port and onions, is fabulous. And your sausages themselves are moist inside still with loads of flavour. It's great. Good on you. Thank you very much. I consider that to be a job very well done, Neil. Thank you. We'll have to keep an eye on you, cos you appear to be a bit of a cook. Oh, good. I'm really, really happy. You know, I didn't know what was what was walking into this morning, and uh, I'm gonna walk away a lot happier and confident than I did. Fashion designer Zandra has cooked lamb, dried apricot, and fennel seed sausage with a Swede potato and fried onion mash, and an onion gravy. It could have looked better. Yeah, well, it could, yes.
I love the sweetness of the dried apricot inside your lamb sausage. The lamb is juicy in there as well. It's nicely seasoned. Also, really like the pepperiness of swede that you got in your mash. However, I've got chewy sausage skin and I've got potato peel in the, in the, <laughs> in the mash. I like the flavour of the gravy. Your sausages are very sweet. However, I don't want potato skin in my mash. That's just me. I'm feeling OK. I've survived the challenge. When it was first announced, I didn't think I'd survive it. Former Royal Marine and athlete Andy has made chorizo, beef, chilli and onion sausage with nutmeg mash and an onion and garlic gravy. Mm. It's sausage and mash in soup. Yeah, unfortunately. The flavour inside the sausage is great. The addition of the chorizo has added the fat and the smokiness of paprika. Your mashed potato is as smooth as it should be and really, really nicely made. Where you can see the problem with your gravy, it's not been thickened, so it's more like beef soup. Your sausages are fantastic. Your gravy's a bit of a write-off because it's, it's just the stock. Open up a bit of seasoning on that mashed potato, please. I feel like a massive weight's being lifted from my shoulders, which is good. But I'm also disappointed that it never went better. The gravy was, was awful. Be careful with this. Last up is TV personality Joey Essex, who's made pork and chive sausages with potato, onion and dill mash and an onion gravy. Do you like your gravy thick? Not that thick, chef, no. Do you like, do you like it thick? No. Not do I, really. I, I like it thick, but not as thick as that. You haven't put chives in your sausage, you've put thyme in your, in your sausage. Thyme? Yeah. Thyme? Thyme. What do you mean, thyme? It's a herb called thyme. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's, is that good? Pork and thyme is a lovely flavour combination. There you go. Is that chive in the, ma in the mash? That's dill. <laughs> They're all green, Joey. Your mashed potato is really well made, yeah. really buttery, and lots of salt and pepper. I like that. Your gravy has got lots of flavour as well. Good flavour of onion, but it's too thick. Yeah. Now, obviously, you're lacking a little bit of cookery knowledge, but I think that can be taught. Thank you. I like your flavours, I like your seasoning. Your technique is quite unusual. Yeah. I didn't think it would be that good. I feel like the other guys might feel a little bit threatened. They'll be scared. <laughs> I have to say, under pressure from a first round of MasterChef, you've done pretty well. No disasters here. We are now going to send you to a professional kitchen where you are going to cook for the paying public. It's day two, and the five celebrities have been split into two groups. They're about to enter the world of the professional chef. Neil, Andy and Oti will be cooking at the Coal Shed, a grill restaurant by London's Tower Bridge. Oh! Pretty nice and warm in here. Running the kitchen is head chef Chris Ditch. The Coal Shed is uh, meat, fish and fire. That is what we do best here, definitely. The cuisine we cook is modern British, but also quite classic at the same time. The idea of having celebrities in the kitchen is a bit risky, but let's see what they've got, see what they're made of. Hi, guys. Today, you'll all be responsible for one dish each. Service will be quite fast. Follow me, then. Right this way. Go on, OT. Ah! <laughs> Andy is taking on the char-grilled octopus starter. 
that will need to be cooked to order on a wood-fired rabata grill. We're just looking for a nice little bit of char on there. You don't want to overcook this on here. Strong charred flavor is going to become really acrid and bitter and completely ruin the dish. I'm just going to base that up with garlic, chili, olive oil. Makes it really, really nice and shiny. You can start to smell that as well. Yeah. It's really, really coming through. And that's perfect. Lovely. Right, next up, we're going to get the uh, shiitake mushroom as well. We're just going to char them off a little bit. So those are the two main uh, cooking elements of this dish. And now I'm going to show you how to plate it. OK? On the octopus dish, there's quite a few Asian-inspired ingredients. The elements are the aubergine and dashi puree. It's also served with uh, egg soy sauce made with dried shellfish, garlic, ginger, chili. The octopus is served with wakame, a pickled Japanese seaweed, and is topped with shiitake mushrooms. A little bit of this, uh, which is a uh, sunflower brittle. There we go, chef. Nice and simple. So how quickly from cooking it to plating it? I would say you've got about four minutes for each dish, yeah. I'm not doing that in four minutes. No chance. While Andy gets to work blanching the octopus ready to grill in service... It's ironic that I'm dealing with the animal that has eight legs and I have one leg. Neil is taking charge of the halibut main course. Presented across two dishes, and cooked in a charcoal Josper grill. Halibut can take quite a few strong flavors, so we're going to be cooking that with a little miso and sake marinade today. This oven goes up to about 500 degrees. How long with now? Uh, we're going to go for about four minutes on that one, Chef. While the halibut cooks, Neil will need to work quickly to bring together the garnish. This is our lovely sea vegetables. Uh, we've got monk's beard, along with our mussels, and seaweed emulsion. Now, with our cauliflower, we're going to go straight on the plancher, tiny bit of oil, and we're just getting a little bit of colour on there. Lovely stuff. Back to the halibut, then. What we're going to do, that's been four minutes now, just going to take that out. When you're cooking fish, halibut especially, there really is a couple of seconds between overcooked and perfect. The plating starts with a mussel puree. The garnish is quite intricate, so when plating that dish, I'll really be watching them like a hawk. A cauliflower and goat's cheese puree. And then a couple of mussels, one over here. And finished off with a mussel velouté. It looks lovely, but there's a lot for me to remember. Absolutely. I'll be doing more than one at a time. That scares <laughs> the life out of me. Two plates of food I have to prepare, not one. I'm going to have to look at my contract. On the other side of the kitchen, Oti is in charge of the lamb main course. Really, really don't want to burn the fat, so we're just making sure that's really, really nice and caramelised on the outside now. How do you know if that's cooked? Cool. Cooking's about touch and feel. No, no timer. Lovely. Right, so this is our pastilla, and we're just going to drop that in the fryer for about five minutes to top. The braised lamb shoulder pastilla, it has to be handled with care. If not, it's just going to break. This is a courgette and basil puree. And right. this is a black garlic puree. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of the lamb rump here. Beautiful. Uh, one section of the pastilla there. The dish is finished with baby gem lettuce, courgettes, and a lamb sauce. It's a lot of things to remember. I feel like I can get it. Once you get the method and you get into it, it kind of makes sense. I'm excited to see if I can do it. If I can't do it, I will definitely scream and dance out of this restaurant. Just run as fast as I can. We're getting it. Yeah! Look at that. Across town, Joey and Zandra are arriving at the Indian restaurant Kahani. We're dream chefs. That's it. I think everyone would want us at a restaurant, <laughs> do you know what I mean? The way we look, <laughs> we've just got too much swag. Running the pass, executive chef Peter Joseph. 
The spirit of Kahani is lighter modern Indian food made with uh, seasonal British ingredients. Would you say this is one of the poshest Indians in London? Uh, of course, one of them. Of course, give me yes. five. <laughs> <laughs> I expect them to be disciplined and ready to work hard. The customer satisfaction is very, very important. There are lots of things to do now, so let's crack on. Thank you. Let's crack on. During service, Zandra will be in charge of the curried broccoli starter. When the order comes, just drop them in. Cooked in a tandoor oven. Oh, it's hot on the face too, isn't it? Yes. She will have to quickly learn to deal with the 360 degree heat. Nicely roasted. Right. We don't want more than this. We so need to solve this broccoli crunchy. Looks and very good, doesn't it? Yes. Now I'm going to show how to plate the broccoli. The first thing we do is turmeric yogurt on the plate. That's pretty. Just tap them. I like it. Keep the broccoli in the middle, center. The broccoli is topped with roasted gram flour crisps and cress. Oh, that's fabulous. Do you have any questions? No, I think you did a splendid job. Now I've got to live up to your standards. They're so brave letting us in here like this. <laughs> Always keep your hands clean at all times. Joey will be cooking Peter's venison keema main course. Served with truffle naan bread that will also have to be cooked in the tandoor oven. Can I do that? Yeah. Just make the bread bigger. That's fine. Oh, no. Naan bread from tandoor, they're going to try today on their own hands. So this is a truffle trimming. It's going to be 360 degree, more than 360 degree heat. Oh. You'll do it. Don't worry. Oh Put it in. So what? Boom. Oh. Ah. Oh. 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 If they lose one or two seconds, the naan may burn. They need to remake again. Oh. Quicker. Oh my God, it's going to fall off. It's going to. No, no, no. It's hanged already. Wow. Well, look, and you uh, made look it. Look at that, mate. It's amazing. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this. If you know about naans, you know that I'd be per that's a perfect naan. It could be better. Could it? <laughs> yes. The naan is topped with a truffle oil and the venison keema, a curried venison mince with green chilies and peas. Wow, that's class, isn't it? What's these? This Breadcrumbs? Parsley crisps. At the end, just slice some truffle. Oh, this is sick. Wow. Happy? Yeah, I'm really happy. I mean, I'll dress myself to look cool, and you just dress that plate to look cool. It's like fashion. That's true. Respect. I mean, there's only one way to find out if it's worth the pain, and that's, and that's, and that's to taste it, so... Mmm, bang on. It's midday. And service in both restaurants is about to start. People are coming in there to pay for me to cook for them. To be fair, I'd pay for my cooking, I'm that good. OK, new order chefs, that is. Two octopus follow, one halibut, one lamb. With first orders in, Andy has just four minutes to get his two octopus starters to the pass. Beautiful chef, very nice. And then we can turn those shiitakes. It's hot. A bit different when things are coming in thick and fast. I want to see a really, really nice colour on these shiitakes. Uh, I think I've been one already, Chef. I really want to wash those mushrooms. We don't want too much colour on them, Chef. But I'll probably start again with those ones. I'm being another one of mushrooms. Go right, you order, Chef. Two halibuts, straight up, please. Yes, we, Chef. Thank you. Going in, Chef. Halibut in, Chef. Having recooked his shiitakes, Andy's now beginning to fall behind. Just need to be a little bit quicker with this. If it takes any longer, it's going to be cold and we're going to have to do it again, OK? It's good to go, is it? Yeah. Beautiful. Just yeah. missing a bit of the uh, sunflower crumb on that one. And we just need to finish off the octopus with the rest of the basting liquor as well. OK, very, very nice. Well done. 
Andy's first two dishes were a little bit slow on the pickup. I am here to show him the way, but I really need him to focus and nail these dishes. That's tough, man. I think I need to work on my timing. This took 11 minutes. People were waiting. This is going to be a long afternoon. <laughs> really need this food right now. We don't want cold food here, otherwise we're doing it all again. We're coming, to, we're coming, chef. It's now down to Neil to get his two halibut dishes up on time. A bit I think more one, more, there, one more minute in there, chef. That that's just needs a little bit, Ooh, little yeah, bit yeah, more. Yeah, 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 one more minute in the hospital, please. Thank you. Well, now, be back in 30 seconds, chef. While Neil waits... Burn, baby, burn! Oti has her first lamb orders on. Breathe, 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 breathe. All right, lamb to the past right away, please. Thank you yep. very much. Back side out, well remembered. This one goes that Lovely. way, yeah. Yep, that's it. What's missing? Uh, Courgettes, sauce. Yep, perfect. Oh. Right, OK, really need to catch up now, right. Chef. We're we'll waiting on three lamb. OK. I feel like I've got the hang of it. The chef is very positive. I just have to keep going. Halibut finally cooked, Neil now needs to master the presentation of his two-plate dish. That's it, mate. Yeah, nice. Happy. That's it. Nice. Yeah, perfect. Not slamming it down. Just be, just be firm. That's... Not going to lie, this could be better, Chef. That was all right, Chef, is No, sorry again. Uh, just going to grab two more plates. Yeah. First attempt failed. Neil must now work quickly to replate. And let's really, really speed it up now. Fish goes cold very, very quickly when it leaves a uh, pan, yeah? First time, not too bad, Chef, but there's a massive difference between finesse and skegness. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Cheers, Chef. Back to the section. Big Neil really needs to be a bit more dainty. Move those uh, sausage fingers. <laughs> Me and finesse don't go. It's just been natural big rawness area. and big, airy. So I've got to just relax a bit when I'm plating up. Over in London's West End... I'm definitely opening my own restaurant. Joey and Zandra's service is in full swing. Do we have a timer anywhere? Like, I can see three minutes. Don't worry about the timer. You can see by, you know, the properly oh, right. roasting. Oh, yours? Perfect. That's it. Oh. Enough. It's fine. Having cooked the broccoli for three minutes, <gasps> Zandra must now carefully master the technique... Don't touch the... I know, I've just learned that. I've just learned that. ..of transferring them from skewer to plate. Whoops. Careful. <laughs> you have to have quite long arms for this. Sandra, I think we're getting late now. I know I am. When Sandra's got the big spear in her hand, I'm going to try and move out of the way. OK. Yeah, is that all right? Oh. So I'm scared of that spear. This is the most I've ever put myself in danger. Oh, have I got that the right way up, or should I do it the other way up? Keep the stems in the centre. Is that OK? That's yes. OK. Right. Guys, ready to pick up? Oh. This for table 16. That was my first one. Except for the fact I burnt my hands, but I'm all right otherwise. You've got to be skilled here. Oh, no, not this bit again. <sighs> it's now up to Joey to get to grips with the tandoor. Bosh! No! Oh, oh, mm. You got it. How, did you... How many times? Five times, but I got it. Oh, I've singed all my ears. Oh, well, like, look how it is, that. Wait, that is a perfect nine bread. Look at that. Excellent. What it. Naan bread cooked to perfection. It's now down to the plating. The naan bread is soaked with oil. I think we can't solve it. Can't solve that? Yes. Can you make another one, please? You're joking. I <laughs> know I'm going to get told off for this one as well. I'll hold that stick. Bosh! Look at that. It's perfect. A bit less oil. That is. Just sprinkled oil, you know. Perfect. There you go, Peter. All right, Joey, one more venison, please. First one I assume was oil on it, but I, I, the reason I put oil on it, because I like, I like, I love oil. Bosh! 
Living the non life. What up? Back at the coal shed. Okay, new order chef. Yeah. Hey, seven octopus follow. Five lamb, two halibut, we? Service is at its peak. Seven octopus on the go. Heat is cracking up. The biggest order yet, so try not to burn them. How long Coming, going? Coming now, chef. Let's go, chef. Right, I really, really want you to nail the plating on this one, please, chef. Love it. Really, really nice colour on there. I want it perfect this time, chef. That's it. Happy. Happy with that, chef. Really, really got that mean, now. Though, chef. Yeah, chef. While Neil grows in confidence... Lovely. OT is beginning to fall behind. OT, I need you on the pass right now, yeah? I'm coming, Customers I'm coming, are waiting. I'm coming. OK. Lamb down first. Lamb down first. Yeah, so lamb down first, chef. Sorry. Which off. Lamb first. Ah. We'll wait about 15 minutes for this now, chef. We really need to go before this gets cold. She's trying. OK, guys, we're going to be going to table 15. This is the well done one. So I just have to be faster. The problem is I'm burning. I'm not precise anymore. I want to see them all exactly the same as the other chef. Really consistent when you're doing seven at a time. Last push, chef, yeah? It's not easy doing seven things at once, but you nailed it. Well done, chef. Thank you. Right, OK, table two, please. Seven octopus, let's go. So much more respect. We were working in the kitchen. With service coming to a close, there's one last chance for Oti and Neil to finish with a flourish. Let's finish on a high. Yes, really chef. want to see everything you got in these last plates, OK? Yes, Chef. Yes, Lovely. Chef. Thank you, Chef. It's last five minutes. Come on, dig, dig in, boys. Dig in last five. Woo! It is hot. How are you doing, Big Chef? I'm all right, little chef. Yourself? Yeah. All I want to see from OT in the last order is, is just the speed. I want to be on time this time. Don't want to be late. She's getting better, but she really needs to speed up. That's it. With OT picking up the pace... Lace. Lace. It's up to Neil to prove one last time he's nailed the presentation. That's it, remember? Delicate finger, chef. Rome wasn't built in a day. Lovely stuff. How was that, Chef? I'm happy, yep. Chef. Good. Yes, Chef. Come on, big Chef. Go, little Chef. Yeah! Nice, Chef. Nice amount of sauce on there. Looking great, Chef. Well done. Well done, Chef. Very, very nicely oh. done. It was lovely to play the food, didn't it? You were here. You're definitely now here. We're Thank you. absolutely on point, Chef. Cheers, Chef. I've never been in a professional kitchen before. I tried to find out how they do it. It is tough. Long hours, so I think a lot of appreciation for chefs now. That was amazing. That was just in my element, and I can take good instruction. I'm a good student, and I'm really happy. Yeah. I'm happy. Thankfully, the orders of seven came in towards the end, so I've kind of got the hang of it a bit. Yeah, I'm buzzing. I can't wait. I want to get back in the kitchen already. Across town... Your venison's burning. ..there's been no let-up. Seven more venison came out to go, yeah? Seven? Seven, yes. Why? Why are you saying that? And Joey's not the only one feeling the pressure. We burnt it. Burnt it? Yeah, we can't solve them, actually. Oh. I burnt it. I burnt that one. Falling behind... Zandra will now need to cook 10 pieces of broccoli all at once. Sandra, this is the last one. Make it perfect, yeah? I've got to be perfect, or I won't pass my exam. So there you go, made by Joey Essex. While Joey gets his plate up to the pass... Thank you, that looks nice. Respect to myself, bro. Zandra's second attempt of cooking her broccoli needs plating quickly. Best lodge ever. Now I put my broccoli in. Pretty crisp. Yeah. Okay, Sandra, you did really well. 
Thank you so very much. It's been wonderful learning from you. Thank you. After four gruelling hours, service is almost over. Far faster, faster. We, we need to go. Last two, yeah? Yeah, keep going. Well, Perfect. Two tr truffle nuns. Excellent, Joey. We did yes. very well, yeah? Thank you. It's amazing what you can learn absolutely, by, absolutely. by listening to someone. It's very tough going. And I think you have to be aware of the, the heat and the skewers. But I'm still smiling. I think I might have managed to impress Peter today. I didn't think it would come out that good. I thought I'm doing pretty well at MasterChef. We've done it. <laughs> well, look, that was sick. I liked it. Woohoo! At least we learned something today big time, didn't we? <laughs> We did. We did, Fantastic. we did, we did. No, not these two again. <laughs> Good to see you back. You are now cooking your own dish. Let's see the food that you really love. At the end of this, one of you is going home. Ladies and gentlemen, one hour, one great dish. Let's cook. If I was to go home today, I'd be devastated. No one wants to be first. It's like a penalty shootout today. I'm just hopefully I'll score my penalty. You right, big man? I'm good, thank you. What's this dish, Neil? This is Friday night pasta. This is what I used to cook every Friday night before a big game. It is pasta shells, minced beef. It's got a bit of bacon there, onions. Can you make a bowl of pasta look yeah. Master Chef sexy? Yes, it's going to be beautiful. You're going to want to take it home. Neil is cooking us a dish which he calls Friday night pasta. That means loads of carbohydrates, lots and lots of protein, ready for him to go out on that pitch and go for it on a Saturday. If Neil delivers a good bowl of pasta with a really good sauce, I'll be happy. I've always thought of myself as someone who copes really well with pressure, but I have been quite surprised by just how nervous I've been. I have practiced this a few times, which probably adds a little bit more pressure, that's for sure. What is this that you're making? So it's a lamb fillet, a creamy mashed potato, carrots and courgettes, and a red wine sauce. The sauce is going to be the one that, if I can get right, hopefully, should the rest of the dish should go OK. How many times have you had a go at this, and how many times has it gone wrong? It's probably 50-50 I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> so let's hope. Let's hope. He's taking a fillet of lamb and he's going to make sure it's still pink in the centre and it's well rested. The sauce seems to be Andy's problem. Keeps on adding cornflour and water. Cornflour and water. I've got no idea if that's too much cornflour or not. Stop playing with Andy. Just let it reduce. Today I'm making a dish that we traditionally have in South Africa. It's a little bit spicy. Oh, see, <laughs> how is it? <laughs> oh, it's hot. <laughs> I'm just hoping it goes right more than it goes wrong. This is called the chicken cha cha curry. Cha cha, you've got a dance step in your dish. Yes, it's whole grain rice with chicken, potatoes, peas. What is it you like about this dish? That I'm full afterwards. <laughs> No, I just grew up eating it. Are you competitive about, about this now? Do you know what? I wasn't until I met Neil. And Neil is so competitive. So, yeah, that kind of just brought out the beast in me. <laughs> <laughs> Oti, that beast in you is terrifying. Oh, is it? Oti's making a curry paste from scratch. 
As long as there's lots of flavour and there's lots of sauce, I'll be happy. I don't want dry curry and I don't want dry, overcooked chicken. Mmm. I like that. Beautiful. Thank you. How long, Ref? You're halfway. I'm feeling good and feeling confident. Why is this falling to pieces, bro? My head's focused. How'd you do this? I just need to do it, man. Oh. Joey, turn that off, take one whisk out, and then the other whisk will fit in the jar. <laughs> Look at that. That is double naughty, mate. Look at that. So this dish is, is, is a bread pudding. How do you make this, please? My nan, we went through this, but all I remember is I'd sogging the bread up in water, and apart from that, sort of all I really know. So how are you doing it if you can't remember how to do it? Well, I'm just, I'm just sort of winging it. Nice. I love bread pudding. It's not like bread and butter pudding, but it's quite dense. Joey's issue now is to be able to cook that bread pudding in time. Ah! Ah, my God. Come on, you bread pudding! Come on! I want to prove to my nan that I listened. Oh, mate, I ain't got much time. Cos I know she's watching. And I'm gonna make her proud. Sandra's making this bread and butter pudding. The bread's got to soak up all that milk and sugar and eggs so it becomes as light as a souffle. She's serving a whole lot with a raspberry coolie. I hope there's something else to soften it, because raspberries are quite sharp. We'll see. I make bread and butter pudding all the time. It's very rich and creamy, and I love double cream. I hope I don't make a mess of it today. Sandra, it's a beautiful dish. It's not a particularly stylish dish, though, is it? Do you want to have a peek? I think it's going to look stylish. I've put hearts on top. Have you? Oh, OK. You told me we had to try for this. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half minutes left, please. Pot for a little girl. Whatever you're doing, you need to finish it in 60 seconds. Joy? Time's up. Neil, bring your plates up, please. has made a pasta bake with a beef, fennel and bacon ragu, served with toasted ciabatta and tomato, onion and basil salad. The flavours and textures are all there. You've got melted tangy cheese over real meatiness and you've got a hint of fennel in there as well. But you've got to admit, it needs a bit of work on presentation. It's as big as you are. Mm -hmm. I think it's delicious. Pasta's cooked really, really well. You've got a little bit of herb through it, sweet tomatoes, tangy cheese across the top. You've done some bread, and the topping is really good with the tomatoes and the onions. Great. I like it a lot. I couldn't eat a whole trayful. <laughs> you and I couldn't finish that together. Seriously? Mate, that's a kilo of pasta and sauce. Listen, if you had to chase Eric Cantona for 90 minutes the next day, you'd eat all that. I'm very, very happy. I think cooking comes first and presentation comes after. I'm feeling quietly confident. Oti's dish is a chicken cha cha curry with potato, carrots, and peas, served with whole grain rice and a tomato flour filled with ketchup. Is that a ketchup you made or ketchup out of a bottle? 
ketchup out of the bottle. <laughs> yeah. Ah. I'm sweating so much. Tomato with ketchup in. That's your own personality on there. I haven't seen it before, but if that's what you like, OT, that's what you like. Sweet vegetables with chicken, garlic and ginger, I think it's a really nice flavour combination. The issue I've got is big lumps of garlic and rice that's still chalky and a little hard. For me, that's a reminiscent of the inside of a great samosa. I like that flavour, I like it a lot. I feel like if I don't challenge myself that I won't learn anything. And I've learned a lot, even from my mistakes. Andy has made lamb fillet served with creamy mashed potato, carrots and courgettes, finished with a red wine sauce. Really like your mashed potato, really creamy and seasoned. Your vegetables are really like. I think you've cooked them with real care. Your lamb here are overcooked. I like mine pink. And you have struggled with your sauce. It, it does need a bit more depth for flavour, most certainly. You were right to be worried about that. Because the lamb fillet has no fat on it at all, it needs to be pink, otherwise it goes dry really quickly. Your sauce, you know the problem. You kept on adding water and cornflour, water and cornflour and diluting it. Oh, Andy, the sauce is, is letting it down a bit. Again, I messed up in the sauce. If I want to stay in the competition, I need to sort that out quickly. Joey has cooked a bread pudding with raisins and cinnamon served with a brandy cream. I really like it, mate. I, I really like it. I get cinnamon, I get a little bit of mace. I love the brandy heat in the sweet and cream. I really do. And I think your Nan's bread pudding is a really, really good texture. So dense, it's almost like Christmas pudding in texture. With the brandy cream, that works quite nicely. It's all cooked, it all tastes good, but it's very, very simple. I'm very pleased. I wouldn't change it. I understand. If I was a judge, I'd give it a Michigan star. That's how you say, is it a Michigan star? Michigan star? Don't trip on the way. Last up is Zandra's heart-shaped bread and butter pudding with a raspberry coulis, fresh raspberries and double cream. You have all the bits and pieces that make up a great bread and butter pudding. The top is lovely and crispy, but the bread is still soft underneath. Right in the bottom, creamy like custard with sharpness of raspberries. I think it's delicious. Oh, I'm glad. You have to come to dinner sometime. You can't bribe me at this stage of the competition. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder your guests regularly turn up for your dinner parties, cos that bread and butter pudding is lovely. The raspberry coulis, I think, is a mistake. I think it tasted all right. I only had a tiny mouthful, but they did enjoy it. What really pleased me here is they all cook dishes that they like to eat. I'm encouraged by that. Neil's dish of pasta may have been massive, but that pasta with the meat sauce was just delicious, wasn't it? Yeah. Absolutely delicious. He would eat all of that himself. Not only that, he was surprised that we wouldn't. <laughs> Zandra cooked bread and butter pudding. Nothing wrong at all with old-fashioned British puddings. And it was superb. I like the raspberry coolie. At least she tried to do something extra. Neil, Zandra, straight through to the next round. We've now got a conversation about Oti, Andy and Joey. The bread pudding from Joey, although lacking in presentation, I thought tasted great. Tasted great. It was spicy, it was sweet, and brandy in the sweetened cream was a good idea. Maybe, 
there is something about Joey. Oti made us a curry. At least she made her own curry paste. The curry itself was really, really tasty. However, John, there were still chunks of garlic in that curry, chunks. Andy actually did decent presentation, but his lamb was overcooked. The sauce was not good at all, and it washed away all the other flavour that was on the plate. I don't really know what's going to happen, so a little bit nervous, to be honest. Not as excited as I was beforehand. I don't know where I stand with them. I feel like I'm, like, in the middle of good and really, really awful. I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, I'm very proud of what I served, but it's up to the judges, isn't it? Thank you very, very much indeed for a great round. We made our decision. The contestant leaving us. Is Andy. Andy, great to have met you. Thanks for your hard work. Thanks for having us. Absolutely gutted. The competitive juices were starting to get going. But it was a great experience. But no, I'm not going to lie, I'm absolutely uh, gutted to be going home. Yes, I'm filled with joy, but also a little bit shocked because I really, really liked Andy and we connected really well. I'm in the competition still. Wallet. I'm just thinking that there's going to be another three hurdles to go. So we have to wait and see what happens. I think it's the first time it's brought around that it is a competition now, you know. Different day, different dollar. Who knows what they got up their sleeve. Next time. I know, where are we? The four celebrities are back. Oh. Ooh. Happy with that? Yeah. Just in time. And the pressure intensifies. You're way, way behind. We just have to work. Speed, speed, speed. You're like a dinner lady. It's like feeding Simon the Zoo here. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs>